so good morning everyone and my name is mongo swami and i am working as an educator on uh, an academy uh, so today we'll be discussing about uh, absorption under mass transfer and the chemical engineering discipline so please uh, download the an academy learning app where you can follow my courses and uh, share this video and also subscribe to the youtube channel of an academy thank you good morning everyone and welcome to lesson number 46 of mass transfer in the chemical engineering discipline so in the last lecture we started about the uh, with the basics of absorption and uh, today we'll be continuing with that so i'll repeat that uh, once for you so uh, absorption it is an unit operation in which gaseous uh, mixture is contacted into a liquid for the purpose of preferentially dissolving one component of the gas mixture into the liquid solvent now we know that Uh, there were two components a and b we wanted to separate out b from a so we used a solvent c and uh, one phase was uh, rich in component b and the other phase was rich in component a the uh, phase rich in component b had c also in it whereas component uh, whereas the phase uh, rich in component a had majority of a okay so uh, you can deal with the uh, practical example like uh, removal of h2s from natural gas by using alkaline solution this is a very common practice in the uh, like in, in industries like gale or uh, where you can uh, associate with the petroleum refining so this is the uh, major application of absorption process now in case of absorption when gas is uh, absorbed in when gas is dissolved in the liquid heat is evolved okay so therefore absorption operations are exothermic in nature so when the operations are exothermic that means it should proceed on low temperature and high pressure so uh, and the solubility of a gas in liquid decreases with increase in temperature now remember one thing whenever you uh, whenever you talk about the uh, dissolving of gas in uh, liquid so it always decreases with increase in temperature whereas when you consider uh, the case for liquid that is liquid in liquid it will always the solubility of liquid in liquid will always increase with increase in temperature okay so uh, on the other hand stripping is an endothermic operation like we discussed this in last class but uh, if we revise it it would be a, a very good thing for us okay so it is an endothermic operation that means it proceeds at high temperature low pressure henry's law uh, xa is directly proportional to p not a and when you do this for mathematical purposes it becomes p not a is directly proportional to xa p not a is equals to kh into xa and p not a is equals to y into pt we know that y a is equals to p not a upon pt so this becomes y is equals to kh upon pt into xa and this kh upon pt is known as small m where small m is known as the slope of the equilibrium curve so therefore uh, y is equals to m into xa where m is equals to kh upon pt and kh is the henry's constant okay so in the last class uh, we started with one of the case like uh, we have this scale of l we have the scale of g this is the counter current mode and that too for absorption because the equilibrium uh, curve lies below the operating line okay now remember the language the equilibrium curve lies below the operating line or we can say the operating line lies above the equilibrium curve so in the first case we said that if we increase the driving force then we'll reach a condition where operating line uh, will cut the equilibrium point equilibrium curve and uh, we will reach the condition of pinch point and we said at pinch point driving force is equals to zero and therefore the time required for separation is infinite and number of theoretical stages are infinite and therefore the height of the column increases okay now when we talk about case 2 so if we increase the value of ls now what happens now if you increase the value of ls so this operating line has a slope of l by g now remember one thing whenever you want to extract more in less time what you can do either you can increase the driving force or you can increase the solvent flow rate so we might think that if we increase the solvent flow rate it it would become very easy for us no that is not the case because if you increase the solvent flow rate then there are some changes which uh, will decrease its effect 
okay so what are these changes like the slope here is ls upon gs so you are increasing l the value of l is being increased so that means slope is tan theta is equals to m and is equals to l by g when you increase l m is increased and ultimately the value of tan theta will increase so we know that like if this would have been the line so it would have been zero now tan, th uh, tan theta is increasing so this becomes if this is 45 uh, tan theta is 1 and suddenly when you are approaching towards 90 degree tan theta will be infinite so therefore the slope is increasing now slope is increasing so therefore we can say that the driving force will decrease let's see how the initial area was this okay now since the slope increased the area will now be this and on further increment of the slope the area will be this okay so here we can say that the driving force is decreased on increasing the slope of the operating line okay so now this is the thing which you cannot uh, uh, remove so for that we will use the optimum conditions okay so if we increase the value of ls more the slope of operating line increases and driving force becomes minimum so therefore we can say that we have to use the ls op uh, optimum as 1.22 to 1.5 ls minimum and this ls minimum will be find uh, found out uh, by applying the material balances and uh, as i told you that for ls uh, when you have to find ls minimum then the equilibrium relation will not exist between the leaving streams but with the inlet stream and the leaving stream that we'll uh, discuss when we'll solve a problem and one more thing Kremsen equation is valid at equilibrium conditions and uh, where ls is equals to minimum and therefore it deals with ideal stages okay so Kremsen equation is valid at equilibrium conditions and it always gives you ideal stages now efficiency has one more formula that is efficiency is equals to ideal trace upon actual trace and these ideal trays are found out by Kremser equation so uh, in the exam you will get a question like this uh, they will give you uh, an absorber and you will be asked to find out the number of uh, stages okay and they will give you the efficiency and they will ask you to find out the actual number of trays so you must know that ideal trays are being uh, are uh, will be found out by using the Kremser equation efficiency will be given to you like 70 percent 60 percent whatever it may be so it will become efficiency is equals to 0 0.6 and ideal trays will be given to you so you can find out the actual number of trays so in the next lecture we will be starting with uh, the height of tar part and uh, in today's lecture we uh, discuss two cases uh, one was if we increase the driving force and if we increase the uh, liquid flow rate that means the solvent flow rate then what are the conditions take place and uh, what is the solution of uh, these problems okay so in the next lecture we will be starting with the height of the tower part and till then thank you